but write it down and I started looking it up. Of course, El and Paleo, I go into Paleo Hebrew, okay, not modern day Hebrew. So, Paleo Hebrew is the same Hebrew Abraham spoke, by the way, just making sure so that in case you didn't know, you know. El, of course, means God, the all powerful one, El. And we use that for the word electricity because we call it power as well, El, electricity. But it means God in Paleo Hebrew and probably even modern day Hebrew, El. Um, new happens to be um, even used today. It survived, you know, the death of the Hebrew language, um, and it survived the new Hebrew people are speaking today. It's uh, is even found in uh, Yiddish Hebrew, um, or y Yiddish is y y Yiddish Jews s still say new. It's like a joining word. It means to gather, come to your point, get to the point, gather something together to conclude. Or like when somebody says, bottom line, and then they get to the point. Well, in the Hebrew, they would say, no, blah, 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 and get to the point. Ray. So, El, nu Ray. Ray is um, a term of endearment derived from the name Rachel. To this day, um, little girls are given nicknames of their names being named Rachel, and were most commonly just called Ray. Okay, and so if you're if somebody's named Rachel, then most of the t most of the chances or they'll be nicknamed Ray Ray or Ray. And so I looked up El New Ray, and well, every time I looked up Hebrew for Ray, I got that, and so it blew my mind because. We know Jacob married two women, Leah, then Rachel. Well, we understand that collectively as the church, we are the Gentiles. We are the not desired ones. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, did not come down for Leah, for the Gentiles. He came down for the precious people of the covenant of, with Abraham. And <coughs> to seal the deal... There's always blood for a covenant. To make a covenant official, You have there has to be the spilling of blood. There has to be a way to pay. There has to be an exchange of energy, power, goods. There has to be investment. And, well, when Jesus shed the, his blood on the cross, that, that made the new covenant. Okay, Closed the deal with the first covenant with Rachel. Um, and he took on Leah. Well, why did the Lord say to me, El knew Ray? And I'm thinking, I might be wrong... I'm thinking it's because we're the second wife, but he loves us like we're the Rachel. The first will be last, the last will be first. Do you understand? And I'm thinking what he said to me is God will gather Rachel. God's gathering Rachel, or we'll gather Rachel, like, hold on. God will gather Rachel. And people will, people will automatically mean that the you know think that this means the Lord is saying he's going to rapture his Rachel. <coughs> Still, the context of Rachel versus Leah, the um, the Hebrew Israelites versus the Gentiles. I mean, we're not in that position of being Rachel, although we are the second wife, and so is Rachel the second wife. So we do. The first will be the last, last will be the first. We're, we're playing both roles here. We're seeing in two different angles here. And I could turn this, this around to be more personalized towards me, like the Lord is telling me, hurry up, personally. Calling me Ray, Rachel, like a part of Rachel, not a part of the Gentiles. Um... But I'm not sure. So I'm just sharing with you what the Lord spoke to me. And I'm sharing with you the research I made and what I've come to know via that research. But I might not be accurate on it. I don't speak Paleo Hebrew or Yiddish Hebrew or any of that. Um, it's a precious language to me. The Lord knows that if he would have just spoken in English to me, um, I would question it. I would, I would um, because demonic attack is real. And I probably wouldn't have taken it serious, and I would have just fell asleep. If I would have just heard English spoke to me by the Lord, probably would have just stayed sleeping. 
<coughs> but when he speaks Hebrew to me, man, I, I, I know instantly in my heart and my soul, my mind, I just click the minute, the second I can't understand what's being said to me. It's like I wake up from that deep sleep and I, even in my soul, I realize the Lord, I mean, I recognize his voice and I realize the Lord just spoke to me and I get up and I write it down so I'll know it for sure, you know. So he knows that's how I operate. So that's why he speaks to me in, in ancient Hebrew. That's what I gather. So if you know someone who speaks or is familiar, very familiar with um, Paleo Hebrew, or even just speaks modern day Hebrew, it's still better than nothing, please ask them what El Nure means, please, in the context of spiritual, in the, you know, in a religious context. That way, if you can get that information and share it with me, I'd appreciate that. Like, that'd just be amazing. Thank you. I'd appreciate that tremendously. I think we all would. I'll do a video to reveal what you shared with me. Um, it's a 39 minute, almost 40 minute video. Wow. Um, it meant a lot to me to hear the Lord speak to me. It always does. It just blows my mind. Like for days, I'm shocked and just like, <gasps> just shocked that the creator of everything actually values me like that to speak to me. Who am I? And that's when I feel the most little, you know, the littlest of the nothings, you know, ugh, like what in the world? And I, at the same time, I feel comforted because, wow, I exist, I matter. And he really loves me, wow. <coughs> he loves us all truly, truly. He loves us all truly so much. Individually, he died on the cross for you specifically. Think about that. Let yourself accept that and believe that and think about it. He knows you by name. He knows the hairs in your head. He knows you. He knows everything you've done that was good and bad. He knows everything about you, every thought you've had, every decision you've made, every word you've said. And despite your own self, he still loves you. Truly, truly enough to die for you. And he's a part of the Most High Almighty God. He said, I and my Father are one, and Jesus is the Word of God. And he died tasted death. He's the living God and he tasted death to save you. To give you the option to be saved. To know him and live forever. Truly. I just want to share that with you. If you've made it this far, wow. You are tough. And I am grateful. Thank you. Um, I'll be getting back on here again more, more sooner than, than usual. Lord willing. You've been watching Witness for Yeshua Mashiach. Bye for now.